Well, hi there. My name is Perry, and welcome to the Literary Knitterary. So today I am bringing you my June TBR. As many people have noted, there are a lot of cool readathons going on in the month of June, and we are almost spoiled for choice uh, with things to take part in. I personally am planning to participate in three readathons: Make Your Myth Taker, the Queer Lit Readathon, and Gays Gone By. That is maybe too many, but I just couldn't say no to any of them. Additionally, June is Pride Month, so I wanted to make sure as many of the books I read as possible are written by queer or LGBTQ plus authors or feature queer characters or themes. I'm going to do my best to accurately describe the natures of the queer characters and relationships in these books, um, but it can be difficult to do so about a book you haven't read, and it can be doubly difficult to do so if the book is a historical fiction book or a historical fantasy book because characters in past time periods or in other worlds might not necessarily use the same language to describe themselves that we use today and then you get into the whole issue of what publishers choose to put into blurbs or summaries and it can be difficult to figure out exactly what's going on in a book until you've read it if i ever misrepresent the identity of a character especially a character in a book i haven't read i'm not doing so willfully or with the intention to cause harm and i'll be doing the best that i can with the information available to me considering that i haven't read these books with that sort of disclaimer out of the way let's get into it let's start by talking about the week-long readathons first up to kick off the month of june we have the queer lit readathon which is basically exactly what it sounds like it's a readathon dedicated to reading queer books there is a bingo board style set of prompts for this readathon it is a pretty casual readathon though and basically you're participating as long as you're consciously reading queer books throughout the week. I have some ideas of books that I would like to get to, but I'm open to seeing those change as the week progresses. Maybe I'll add on, maybe I'll swap things out, you know, we'll see what happens. I did manage to get the group book, This Is What It Feels Like by Rebecca Barrow, out from my library, which is about a group of female friends who used to have a band together, but then the band broke up as each of them was dealing with their own personal problems, and now they are trying to get the band back together to win a competition, I believe. This sounds adorable, like a celebration of friendship, and just like a lot of fun. Next up, I'm looking into reading Mean Little Death Queer by Terry Galloway. Uh, Terry Galloway is a queer performance artist who I first studied in a class on queer performance art. Art. While we were looking at some of her art in that class, this book was recommended and I've been meaning to get to it ever since. Basically, this is a memoir. It's the story of her life. I know that it covers her losing her hearing when she was nine and it also covers her identity as a queer person. Um, Again, I've just been meaning to get around to this one for a while, so I'm excited to finally pick it up. And my final pick for the Queer Lit Readathon, as it stands right now, is Verona Comics by Jennifer Dugan. This is, I believe, a YA contemporary. Um, obviously, it's kind of a restyling of Romeo and Juliet about uh, two teenagers who maybe they like each other, but their parents run competing comic book shops. I think one is a big chain and one is sort of a little indie store. I first made note of this book because if I remember correctly, it features a male-female romance where both of the parties are bisexual, which is right up my alley. <laughs> The Gays Gone By Readathon is a particularly exciting one to me because it focuses on queer or LGBTQ plus authors, characters, and stories in historical settings, whether that be contemporarily written historical fiction or books written in the past. I am super excited to read some queer historical fiction and to see what everybody else is reading too. Again, this is sort of a more casual bingo board style readathon. I have some picks that I think will enable me to get a bingo, but my primary focus is to just spend the week reading queer books in historical settings. My first pick is Dark and Deepest Read by Anna Marie Mecklemore, which I have been super excited about since I first heard about it. This is basically a retelling of the Red Shoes. All of the books that I've read by Anna Marie Mecklemore so far have been queer and beautiful and magical, and this one focusing in on dancing and retelling a story about dancing uh, appeals to me in particular, uh, so I am super excited to get to that. Next up we have an adult historical romance, which I've been meaning to get to for a long time, which is Unmasked by the Marquess by Cat Sebastian. This, as far as I can gather from the blurb, is about a housemaid named Charity who assumes the identity of a man named Robert in order to look after their younger sister and make sure that their younger sister makes an advent match. Eventually they run into the Marquess from the title and need to ask the Marquess for help and the Marquess is attracted to this um, young gentleman uh, that appears to him. And again to paraphrase from the back of the book he finds out who Charity is and they like each other but they have to figure out how to make it work because he can't marry a woman in pants and she doesn't want to go back to pretending to be a respectable young lady. This basically just sounds like everything I could possibly want out of a historical romance. I've sort of been taking a break from historical romance because I've gotten a little bit frustrated by some of the formulae that crop up again and again, especially around the interconnection of like love and sex and children and money and aristocracy. Um, some of the ways that those things are commonly treated in romance novels are starting to really grind on me, but I think switching to queer historicals might be just what I need to get me back 
in the swing of the genre. My final pick for the Gaze Gone By Readathon will be a book by Sarah Waters, uh, either The Paying Guests or Tipping the Velvet, depending on if my hold for Tipping the Velvet comes in. The Paying Guests is one I'm more likely to be able to get from my library, but I've heard that it's a little bit more divisive than Tipping the Velvet. I'm not sure if it's the best place to start, but the premise does sound really intriguing to me. I'm gonna give you a summary for that one because I know that I can get it. The Paying Guests is set in 1922 in England, I believe, and follows a family that is sort of descending into genteel poverty as a result of which they need to um, let out rooms in their house, start taking borders, but the couple that moves in disrupts their lives in unexpected ways. Okay, now we're going to circle back to the beginning of the month and talk about the Make Your Myth Taker readathon. This is a really creative readathon that sort of has a um, quest or like character creation type narrative to it. So what you do is you pick a character that you want to become and you have a series of four prompts that you have to complete in order. Uh, again, to sort of write your character's story. This one was another instance where there was so much cool stuff going on that I could not choose between options. Um, so I eventually had to uh, send out a poll among my family uh, to pick between the pirate and royal spy paths, but pirate did win. So I will be a pirate for Make Your Myth Taker. Because the readathon covers the entire month and there are four prompts, I figured I would be reading about one book a week to sort of keep pace with everybody else. Uh, and, and be able to sort of participate to the fullest extent. Um, so for the first two weeks, I made sure to pick books that also fit in with the prompts of the respective readathons for the first and second week of June. So the first prompt for the Pirate Path is to read a book featuring water, because pirates, of course, sail the high seas. I picked a book that is very closely related to my chosen path, which is The Mermaid, The Witch, and the Sea by Maggie Takuda Hall. So as far as I can tell, this is about a young orphan named Flora who assumes the identity of a young man, Florian, to become part of the crew of a pirate ship. But eventually we find out that the pirates are up to some sort of extra nefarious business as Flora is being more and more drawn to one of the wealthy passengers, Lady Evelyn, who's en route to an arranged marriage, and basically I think the two of them conspire to sort of break out and right wrongs, and there's a mermaid, and you know, it's all, it's pirate, it's a pirate book. I'm a pirate, it's a pirate book. The second prompt is common to all of the rogue character paths, and it is to read a book with a dark cover. My pick for this is Carmilla by J. Sheridan Lefaniel. I hope that I pronounced that right. Um, this is going to jive well with the Gaze Gone By readathon because it is a classic. This is a vampire novel that predates Bram Stoker's Dracula and it focuses on the relationship between the vampire Carmilla and a young woman named Laura. The edition that I'm getting out from my library looks like this, which I think is pretty dark, as you would expect a gothic book about vampires to be. The third prompt for pirates is to read a book featuring a journey, and for this I have picked The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is a science fiction novel set on a spaceship where the crew work on tunneling wormholes, I guess to facilitate speedy space travel. And from what I've heard, this is a story about found family as the crew members sort of come together and bond, and I've heard nothing but great things about this. And finally for our Myth Taker TBR and for this video, we have the prompt to read a bargain book, and my pick for this is Orlando by Virginia Woolf, which I got from a used book sale for one dollar. This is also a classic or a modern classic, and this is about the character of Orlando who began his life as a man in the Elizabethan era, but then at the midpoint of the book wakes up one day as a woman. I know that Woolf uses that transformation to comment on the lives of women in the 18th and 19th centuries, so this book actually covers the time period from the Elizabethan era up to 1928, if I'm not mistaken. It just sounds fascinating, and like other books on this list is something I've been meaning to get to for a while, and June sounds like the perfect time. So that is my set of TBRs for the overabundant crop of amazing June readathons. Let me know in the comments down below if you are participating in any readathons this month and what you are most excited to read. For the week-long readathons, I am not planning to vlog, but I am hoping to figure out Twitter enough that I can use it to sort of update my progress and connect with other people who are participating in those readathons. So if you are not following me on Twitter, now might be a good time to do so. The link is always in my description. Um, I am very new to Twitter and I don't really understand how to use it. So if you have any tips for like a socially anxious grandma uh, getting started on social media, that would also be amazing. But in the meantime, I hope you are staying happy, healthy, and safe. And I hope that somewhere out there, there is a great book waiting just for you. Bye.